All right, uh, good evening, order, and call a special meeting to order. Uh, April 8th, 19th, 6.30, Danfield Town Council. Roll call, please. Councilor Arnotti. Councilor Bosco. Here. Councilor Sakai. Councilor Sakai. Councilor Davis. Councilor Denny. Councilor Falk. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councilor Muller. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Here. Councilor Ungar. Here. There's six members present, five are out. Uh, discussion item two discussion resolution resolution regarding setting a public hearing for the 1819 budget. Do I have a resolution? Do I need oh, one? There's, there's one. Sorry, Did I didn't go to get a chance to get my pad at home. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to bring my resolution regarding setting a public hearing for 2018 2019 budget whereas the town count the, the town council of the town of Enfield values the opinions and comments of its constituents and whereas in accordance with chapter 6 section 4 of the Enfield town charter any elector or taxpayer may have an opportunity to be heard regarding appropriations for the ensuing fiscal year and for the purpose of being heard on issues of vital community importance and concern and whereas the town council shall conduct a public hearing at the Enfield high school auditorium 1264 Enfield Street Wednesday May 2nd 2018 at 7 o'clock be it resolved that an order of business of the 1819 budget hearing be arranged as follows. One, presentation of the town manager's budget. Two, the chairman of the board of education highlights education budget. Three, comments from members of the public for the first time. Be it further resolved that each speaker is requested to register the town clerk, his name and address. Uh, no speaker be allowed to speak more than five minutes each successive time the speaker's name is called. Additionally, any speaker who is not registered with the town clerk will... will will be allowed to speak only after those who are registered no longer wish to speak. Be it prepared on April 17, 2018 by the town manager's office. So moved. So moved. Set, set, moved by Councilor Muller, second by Count, Deputy Mayor Suzak. <laughs> Sorry, any discussion? So it's on May 2nd, Wednesday, 7 o'clock in the Anfield High Auditorium. All right, roll call. Councilor Bosco. Here. Council, 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 Council. four. Okay. <laughs> Four. Mayor Four. Four. Here. Four. 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 Whereas the grant provides reimbursement for the emergency management director, partial reimbursement for staff support, operational expenditures such as office supplies and resolved, and resolved that the town manager, Brian R. H. Chadkowski, is authorized to sign and submit the grant application in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield, the State Department of Emergency Management and Homeland Security, and affix the corporate seal, submitted on April 19, 2018, by the town manager's office. So moved. By Councillor Fox, second by Councillor Mother. Any discussion? Hearing on roll call. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Lutwin. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councilor Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. There's six in favor, none against, and no abstentions. All right. Item four, budget discussion. Item four A, we turn it over to Mr. Town Manager and Social Services. And I will immediately turn it over to uh, Don Homer Boothia for her presentation. Okay, and Morning. Deputy D Director Humphreys with me as well today, and I have we have staff yeah, over there yeah. in the peanut gallery in case you, we all want to get into a level of detail that we're not prepared to respond to today. So right. I wanted to start with some remarks as I did um, last year to set some framework and context for what we did um, in the FY19 uh, budget proposal. So if you bear with me for a couple of minutes. Um, first, I want to thank with a big thing Start with a big thank you. First, to my DSS managers and staff. They've done an outstanding job maintaining the quality and range of services we offer while adjusting to the austerity measures that we put into place. It's been a tough year. Everybody knows that, and they've done a great job. Staff have gone above and beyond expectation, are to be commended for sharing materials, supporting each other with staff resources, expanding community partnerships, and reaching out to diversify our revenue streams. So thank you, guys. You've worked your butts off, and I appreciate that. I'd be remiss also if I didn't thank and acknowledge the leadership from the town manager's office and town council. Your support of the work that we do through the Department of Social Services is nothing short but remarkable, especially in these difficult financial times. You can see that in, in the comparative data we have in your packets, which is at this point coming around. Thank you. Thank you, Vanna. Um, and we have some information there on the FRC and the Adult Day Center, but you all know that the umbrella that you provide for social services here in the town is second. It's, it's just us in Manchester with this uh, level of services that we provide. And um, I, I know the town 
town leaders have taken great pride in that and built it over decades. So it's, it's a, people appreciate what you do here for folks. As the town manager mentioned in his budget presentation on Monday night, working on and with the budget has pretty much become a daily activity, even for us social workers. You entrust us with public funds, and it's our job to make sure they're used appropriately and monitored regularly. We take our responsibility to be good stewards very seriously. In all program areas, we've pushed expenses into our grants, reducing the general fund expenditures wherever possible. In the current fiscal year, 41% of our budget is general fund, and 59% is a mix of federal, state, and private grants, along with fees, fundraising, and donations. For FY19, we're projecting about the same 40-60 split. We provide a pie chart in there that Damien um, helped us with today in your packet so you can kind of see it as a visual representation. So now on to some highlights of the FY19 budget proposal. Um, Damien and I work with staff simultaneously to put together the budget pro proposal and a reorganization plan for the division. We have provided a copy of the proposed FY19 org chart in your packet. Um, in that proposed reorganization, we've intentionally created three primary service areas that more accurately reflect the work that we do and the people that we serve early care and education, youth and family services, and adult and community services. In our plan, the deputy director would assume administrative responsibility for the division of adult and community services effective July 1st. From a programmatic standpoint, the reorganization moves us closer to full implementation of the national standards for social work practice. It creates a deeper and more intentional alignment of the work that we do with the school system, which we take great pride in, and is a more effective and efficient way to deliver services and deploy staff resources. The new Early Care and Education Division is focused around the work of our nationally accredited Child Development Center and our state-funded school readiness program. The new Youth and Family Services Division combines the strengths and assets of the Family Resource Center with the youth services, allowing us to align and strengthen our activities with the school district pre-K through graduation and to focus on providing more support for the parents and guardians of the children that we serve. And finally, the new Adult and Community Services Division combines transit services, which is Magic Carpet and Dialeride, our, the congregate meal program that we run at Mark Twain. We'd like to rename that Food and Nutrition Services because we think that's more of a representation of what we actually do and the work that that staff does. Yeah. Neighborhood Services has been one of those mysteries. <clears throat> Nobody ever seems to know what um, that's all about, so we'd like to rename that Community Services and Outreach, and then the Adult Day Center. Our budget proposal includes modest rate increases for dial ride child development, and the Adult Day Center. Those increases are recommended at levels that are consistent with current local market rates. We provided a chart with that um, in your packet as well with, with more detail. The budget also includes a sustainability plan for the Adult Day Center built on an average daily attendance of 15 patrons and a staffing plan more in line with the industry standard, which is one to seven. It also includes increased revenue estimates based on our FY19 grant requests and the previously mentioned new rate structure. In addition, as you all know, Social Services Administration continues to administer the grants allocated by the Council for the Commission on Aging, the Network Against Domestic Abuse, the North Central Regional Mental Health Board, Educational Resources for Children, the Food Shelf, Loaves and Fishes, Kite, CHR, and the Mary Lou Strom Community Health Center. Their FY19 proposed allocation reflects a 1% reduction from their approved FY18 allocations. Over the past two years, we've been able to develop written partnership agreements and refine the quarterly reporting form so that we can better document your return on investment. So I think we're moving in the right direction with those. For FY19, we'd welcome the opportunity to more closely align what those partnership agreements do with the council priorities uh, and with the grant deliverables. So at that point, I we're happy to uh, answer any questions that you have on anything that um, is, relates to the current budget year and or next fiscal year. Any questions on kind of how, I know I blew through that, but I just want to. I talk fast. I'm from Massachusetts. Hmm. Anyone have any questions? Councilman Bosco. So <clears throat> can we get the adult day, day center back to being cost neutral again? Um, I'm just going to say from what I saw financially, and John can probably back this up a little bit more, I'm not sure it's ever been cost neutral. I think <clears throat> well, we can get closer that, that, to that model. Right, and that yeah. was something we tried to do back yeah whatever it was like seven eight years ago it was supposed to be cost neutral yeah. and uh with these rates and 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 maybe look can we get it to be there um i i our acting director for the adult day center here joanne McCarroll, if you guys don't know her um she was a part-time nurse there before she stepped up into the leadership role I have total faith in her ability to help us do that. Financially, I'm not as I'm not as secure financially as I am with her leadership. So it's been very difficult, as you know, with attendance. Um, it's an average of 15 that varies per day. 
The state rates which reimburse us for Medicaid have, haven't moved in the last I don't know, decade and a half, so that's not going to go anywhere. Um, t 20 patrons a day for t 52 weeks a year would be a stretch, even with the rate increases um, and um, the additional grant revenue. We did um, request from our partners at the NCAA much more money than we've ever asked for to help it support. I, we can get you some estimates about where we are now that might help project where we are for next year, but I, I didn't bring That's those with me like today. That's where I'd like to see you know, what we're going to be, uh, where you think the projections are going to be, where we're going to be at. Yeah, and we can do that for you. Okay, thank I you. I can run several, you know, Joey, what we can do is we can run several different models. If we have 20, we have 15. Yeah, you know what? It, 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 it's going to, I know it's going to be a hard stretch. It's just, yep. at least we have an idea where mm -hmm. we, where we come and where we need this tribe for a goal to get to where we can get to either, yep. either cost neutral or, or almost okay. there. Okay, and we have, uh, you know, for background, we have Damian and I and Joanne went out to visit the Windsor Adult Day Center. It's the other uh, right. municipal run, so we know what their mm -hmm. fee structure is. We know how they provide transportation. We know what their staffing patterns are. We've been to the Adult Day Center in Enfield as well, and we have a trip planned to East Hartford. So what we plan to do is kind of put all that best learning together, and if we have the opportunity to bring that consultant in, those folks will help us think through what a best plan is. But right now, mm -hmm. what we put in the budget is is what we think is doable, but there's still a little risk involved. And are we still going to be going out to the other towns to try to get the people in? Because that that was when, when we did it back, mm -hmm. that, we were trying to get the people from out of town back here. And I know at one time it looked like maybe we weren't going to be looking into getting people from out of town. So uh, we, we do have I, folks from out of town now. Almost a third of the folks that we serve on a daily basis are not from Enfield. Um, sometimes you run into issues with out of town transportation. A lot of the dialeride programs from surrounding communities won't take you out of out of town. Summers does that now and Suffield does. Um, and then we have some folks who drive their family members in and drop them off and pick them up. So it is a it's a mixed bag based on the resources that people have available and what their municipalities contribute. Now, you know, the other towns don't contribute to right to the service that we provide to their residents. So I don't, I, don't, I don't think anybody's got an extra money laying around, but that might be another opportunity to have that conversation as well. Yeah, it's just, you know, if, yep. if, if we have that, that sweet spot that we can try to go for to, to make sure the program does work. Yep. And, uh, and it's, that's where I, yep. I would like to be, but... Yeah, well, Joanne's done a great job. She's only been around, what, how many days? 19? I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. But not so, many. and she's, not many. And, not many. <laughs> and she's done a great job. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that all the <clears throat> services we offer are up to the, you know, institutional standards. So she's already kind of reviewed the meds. We made it through our, our site audit from the State Department of Education early this week with only a couple citations and Karen helped with that. So that was great. Um, so I think we're moving in the right direction. I think improving the quality of the services that we offer and getting everything else aligned, we have a much better shot, literally, of, of getting the recruitment we need for the census. Thank you. Peter. <clears throat> um, I know uh, Jean does an excellent job getting grants to run youth services. Yes, she does. <clears throat> Are there uh, grants that you could apply for and use as part of adult daycare? We have several. And what we've done this year, um, and they're, they're recurring grants, mostly through the North, North Central Air Agency Area. Are we doing? North Central Say, Area Agency, Agency on, on Aging. Aging. Mm -hmm. Lots AAA. Of A's there. Yeah. And so this year, we've actually increased uh, our request to them. They fund um, the uh, CNA positions. Yep. They fund the Alzheimer's support. There, we have access to a respite program for special needs families mm -hmm. for funds, and so we are we're out there getting as much as as we can mm -hmm. um, on that end. And, but most of our folks are are full pay, yep. at there. Very few Medicaid, very few VA reimbursements. Mm -hmm. Most folks, you know, pay for their family members to come yeah. during the day. Uh, uh, Brian, I know back um, a while ago, I went to a CCM event and came back with this thing where they said that they have access to this grant website. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if, if that's something that you have seen yeah. or whether you have researched and whether there might be something yeah. additional that you don't have yeah. that you could go for. Yeah, so we get that. Mike, our development already gets it, so he's willing to share. It's something that Damien and I are both very well familiar with. Some of the issues, I'll be honest with you, is a lot of the uh, philanthropy want to fund don't want to fund municipalities. They want to fund mm -hmm. nonprofits. And so sometimes we're just cut out of that whole process unless yeah. we get a nonprofit partner. So we've looked at different arrangements, but we'll continue to look. We look all the time. Right. So as Mike knows, we're out there digging for right. quarters in the backyard some days. So yeah. thank speaking, you for that. Speaking of that, is the Felician Sisters, is that nonprofit? 
it's part of the Felician Service Organization, which is a national organization. Mm -hmm. And so um, they have support from their nonprofit. They do get grants, and they also have large contributions mm -hmm. from their faith-based organization. Is there any possibility of developing a relationship with them? To... We have we have one that shares referrals back mm -hmm. and forth. Um, I don't I don't know what f are you talking about a financial relationship or possibly you know, if, if they can get grants and you can't and maybe yep. that could be shared. Yeah, we can. We'll we'll try. I know that they provide their own transportation. So one of the mm -hmm. things we've had conversations about, and the folks the folks who go to Felicians Day um, pay five dollars to drive in in the morning and five dollars to drive out. Mm -hmm. So they have their daily rate and it's an additional ten dollars if you want transportation. Mm -hmm. So for the family members that can't afford that, they're town residents, so they're eligible for a dialer ride. So we've been working out those types of situations <coughs> to make sure that folks who live here who need the service can get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. um, and we did have some pretty interesting conversations with them early on in the last probably six months, um, mm -hmm. trying to coordinate services and other things. But yeah. Don't the clients pay to use dial -ride? I thought that was well, pay a flat fee for the year. Yes, indeed. But um, mm -hmm. if, you are, if you aren't able to pay that, because of the way our grant resources um, require us to do our work, um, many people can ride for free. Mm -hmm. So, so that's it's a, more a of a financial. It's burden more of a there. donation, <laughs> should I say, than mm -hmm. a fee? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Great program, expensive nope. to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they're all expensive to run. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Sure. My question was answered. Done. I got I got a couple questions. Sure. So, with, to what Councilman Bosco was saying, are we currently in a deficit situation with adult day? Yes. And where is that in the budget? I guess. Well, it's it would be current year budget, which you don't have in front of you. Okay. But I can do a summary for you when yeah. we, we we can have it for you. And what are we projecting year. on even with these rates next year? Oh, next year? Oh, I'd have to go back and we'd have to go back and look. Yeah. Because part of what will happen is. Um, we put the grant requests in in this yeah. fiscal year. We put what we asked for. What we have to be able to do is figure out in July or August what we're actually going to get, and then we have to kind of go back and right. adjust. But um, we practically asked for double. Yeah, and it really depends on the numbers of patrons that attend the adult day center. So that's, in many ways, because that's not a fixed number, right. yeah. it varies. So, uh, so, so the $90 for, like, for a non-resident, is this similar to... Um, I don't know, is it conjugal living type uh, cost? So if someone would, uh, do they have to have insurance to long-term care or anything like that? They don't have to. Because I remember years ago when long-term care was kind of on average for a day stay in, in any kind of, you know, facility in Connecticut was on average $250 a day. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. why, I mean, I think the whole point yeah. is to keep people out of institutions because they are so expensive and right. people have questions about the quality of care. So what's been happening recently is that, the State Department of Social Services has provided more reimbursement for in-home care. So a lot of folks who would have come to us five right. years ago are staying mm -hmm. home and getting four hours of somebody coming into their home, helping them with their laundry, doing their bathing, watching their meds. So I think the landscape has kind of changed around us. Right. Um, and that's true of all adult day centers. So well, I think just in general, it's the marketplace. It's yeah. going back to the, you know, again, yeah. with all the, you know, the, the busing and the home companions and all right. the other mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. How does that play? And do, do we coordinate with home companions if folks don't want to come into, you know, into... We do referrals back and forth with yeah. all, almost all the nonprofits, all the hospitals, all the rehab centers, and that's where folks, you know, tend to come back and forth from. I think originally, um, from what I was told, when the Adult Day Center was built, the theory was the folks who live at Mark Twain will come over and spend the day with us and have lunch. So we have a lunch program separately at Mark Twain now um, that we work with CRT on. But I think what happens literally in the, in the housing component is once you get medically fragile, you're outplaced. Right. And so instead of having them stay and be medically fragile and come to us during the day, they just mostly go to institutionalization directly from the, um, from the housing authority. Is it by, is it, I mean, have we run a deficit for a number of years, roughly, or? I think almost, I think yeah. everyone. Any chance we can get, I don't know, so the three, four data? years? Yeah. So, well, well it's uh, actually right here. So in. What, what page, Brian? Uh, so this would be not in the detailed, in the right. general summary book on page 87. Okay. Got it, okay. All right. So if you go down, it's halfway down the page, adult day, mm -hmm. right? So the general fund transfer is going to be what has to come in to cover the shortfall from grants and revenues that come in. So you can see that it's, you know, 60,000 yeah. 60, back in 16, then it almost doubled to 119 and 17, 
right? Then in 18, you know, we're, we're at 29 was the estimate, but I don't think that that's going to be yeah. the case. Okay. It's going to be significantly larger because the, the daily population, um, you know, fell away. And then this year we're projecting 100 and just over $175,000. So um, to the extent that it's ever been close to balance, 16, you know, based on, on this grouping, um, right. But, you know, again, it's all dependent upon how many bodies we have yeah. coming and going on any given basis. Right, and the grants, the revenue side yeah. of the grants kind of goes up and down, too, so. Right. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Can I ask one more? Uh, sure, great, Peter. Uh, yep. The fact that if people can't yep. afford to pay for the bus, you do it for free. Does that mean they're getting the service at adult cake? They care for free. So the transportation <clears throat> costs for folks from Enfield who take dial -a ride are not in the adult day center budget. They're in the dial -a ride budget. So there's no transportation costs in so what you see in front program, of you. So it, it's program. right. So it's on, it's on, it's on the transportation side. Mm -hmm. So people are invited to um, pay when they do the enrollment. We let them know. We track whether they pay or not. We follow up with additional things. But at a certain point in time, we're allowed to ask three times for the payment. And after that, we're done because of the federal funding. So when they reach their destination, they're paying full fee to be there. At adult daycare. Uh, um, so the dial ride is an annual fee. I realize that. So there is there is no daily fee. Mm -hmm. At Enfield, the adult daycare. If they is. can't afford to pay for the bus, how yep. can they afford to pay for the adult daycare service? Well, I think their folks like <clears throat> are trying to stretch their budgets in different ways, and I think they probably prioritize, you know, adult day services over transportation expenses. And so they may be coming for half a day. They may be taking dial ride in the morning. Their family member may be picking them up in the afternoon. It's a different census every day. And you're, mm -hmm. you can do it one half day. You could do five full days. It just depends on um, what the family can afford and what the patron needs. Mm -hmm. So there's not a correlation there. <laughs> no, it's a little, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an interesting process. <laughs> yeah. so. uh, Councilman Bosco, then Deputy Mayor Zuzak. So <clears throat> with the adult day, <clears throat> why don't we just charge a weekly charge? If you come or you don't. Mm -hmm. Because the way it looks to me is today I can watch mom, tomorrow I can't. But the problem's going to be is we don't know. So if, if, our, if our numbers are revolving around this enrollment, if we charge everybody for five days... And you don't come, you don't come, but we also may be able to drop the price a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this way we have more people, and I believe that's how it is at the, uh, the child care. It, you you pay for a week. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't and care if you use right. it, you don't. You're buying the spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so when we looked at the, what the other adult day centers mm -hmm. do, it's more comparable to what, how we have done prior practice here, which is basically, you know, we do your assessment. You, you Your family member wants you to come Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and, and come in at 8 and stay through lunch. So that's a, literally a half day that they're charged for. And so um, we have very few people coming mm -hmm. full time, five days a week, almost no one. Right? No one. Maybe five. Yeah. Yeah. So we can look at that model. Um, we do, ch we do, I mean, it is a weekly fee. We kind of divide it up by the daily rate. Right. But uh, it's just, if you uh -huh. ex expect a spot, uh, if, if I have a spot for you sitting here uh -huh. and you don't pay for that spot, we can't put another one in that spot. So, uh, you know, I, I don't want to seem sound mean and rotten and choices are going to be either you're going to pay for, you pay for a yep. week or the program's going to go away yep. and i would it would pain me to see that program go mm -hmm. away no, but yep. let's be real we we can't expect people <clears throat> to hold spots for nothing yeah we could do that with the full pay the folks who come and, and pay for their family members the Medicaid and the VA billing and other sources that support those folks we we actually can't do that with they we only get reimbursed for the days that they come so we can work it out. We could run some numbers that way to look at it. It, it would be a very different orientation for the families we're serving right. and for and folks coming have in. To. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to save the program, but mm -hmm. but with being as far debt as we are, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be very hard to to, yeah. to save the program, especially when you're telling me we're, we're taking care of 15 people. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. And it's not 15 a day. It may it could be three or four one day and and 15 the next. I think we've been eight or nine on a. 
probably our lowest day, 11. Yeah. Well, I, so. I'd like to point out that this program wouldn't necessarily go away. Based on you know, our efforts to try and understand where we could control costs previously, we've already identified an interest in the private sector to right. run mm -hmm. this facility. Right. Right. So it wouldn't go away in the fact that it would not be available to the citizens of our town. It would be something that we could It do. would be a function that is no longer provided by the town. town. Just like so, all the towns on this list, you know, that, that really people should see how many towns really offer um, adult day. Adult day. I mean, it looks like there's probably 15 towns here at least, and there's only two that, that have. There's actually three in the state of Connecticut. It's us, Windsor, and West Haven. That's it. That's it. Three. That's it, three. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, this is a great service. Yep. And, you know, my, my grandmother-in-law went there, and they took care of her really good. And I, I hate to see anyone go yeah. into a nursing home because mm -hmm. when we went and dealt with this last time, I was the one that, that stood up and, and mm -hmm. we saved it. But it was always supposed to be more or less self-funding, not where the town right. was going to be paying right. for Right. Well, it. I can tell you that, you know, and town manager is absolutely right. There are many different ways to offer the service without us directing, doing it. So there are opportunities there. We can, you know, we've looked at the staffing plan. We've looked at the rates. So we can we can do whatever I'm, you decide. I'm one out of 11, but mm -hmm. I would like to see something where we have a rate for half a day mm -hmm. and we have a rate for full day, mm -hmm. but you pay for five days. Because so, it, it yeah. would make scheduling so much easier and it would make the it would. program mm -hmm. much more sub uh, sustainable. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know me, I would much rather pay and know I have the spot for mm -hmm. my family member than lose the program yeah. that the town is supplying and have to go into a different Another program. Option. Yeah. Well, we, can, we could actually um, check with the families we have enrolled now to see how many. I mean, we could do a little bit more research that way. I can tell the, the Enfield, the Felicians, um, doesn't run that way either. But we fully understand what we do for the Child Development Center in terms of the billing and the enrollment. Right, it should be the same. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. why, you know, I, I, I don't, again, I don't mm -hmm. want to seem mean or I don't want to seem no. rotten. But yeah. yep. I bring my kids somewhere to take care of it, and him or her. Mm -hmm. And I bring my mother or my father or my relative to a place to take care of them. These two should be working the same. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can And there that. is no different than from an adult to a kid. If you want your, your family member in a program, mm -hmm. you, you have to pay for the seat because it's not fair to the town of Enfield that, oh, today I can, I can watch and I'm not going to get charged. But the town can't use yep. that seat to anybody else because I know I'm held at right. a 15 limit. Yep. Well, we're licensed for 40 there, um, and you, yeah, but, but if you've the been to the facility, if, that would never know, work for if, us. If tomorrow you had five more members, you wouldn't have enough staffing. No, we would. We are, would you? We're currently staffed for at least 35 patrons. So then you're paying for all the staffing when you don't need That's why we need to look at, yeah, we need to look for the, at a restructuring plan for next right, year. Right, and that's why yep. I'm thinking that you pay for a week. You know what? At that point there, that, that staff is paid. Yep. And if you don't come, well, it's better for the other people. Yep. Well, we'll work out whatever at your discretion. So we're happy to I do would, that. I would encourage that you consider what will come from the evaluation study to determine. So you just heard her say we're staffed to carry 35, right. but our average daily census is only, you know, 13 or 15. Yeah. So, you know, there could be additional savings to be had and still be able to provide the increased accessibility that the current practice has. Not mm -hmm. to say that changing the practices you described would not be beneficial, but there might be other ways to uh, to get where we need yeah. to go without making such an immediate right. drastic change to, to yep. the schedule. Well, I just think it'd be more predictable. <clears throat> oh, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. It would be way easier. Right, Joanne? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Thank you. Thank you. You know, I do like Joey's suggestion, but what I keep hearing is that there's a change in the landscape of how um, care is provided for our elderly 
citizens in that they are not just necessarily have to be removed from the home, but there's more in-home care. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, as when we started the adult daycare center, the population wasn't quite as um, flush with, you know, our older citizens. And now as we're growing into this phase where we have a significant amount of um, citizens that need, you know, extra help during the day that the the plan the program that we have where they're removed from the home and they go to a place to stay seems to not be what the soup of the day is for lack of a better way to describe it that you know there's more programs in in their own home well than all the, used all the to adult be. day centers are struggling it's not just us yeah. you know we've this been out there we've the talked to the Connecticut the association it's the yeah. landscape has changed, yeah. and we can, we do perpetually do this that you know we've got a round peg and we don't care. What shape pool has, you know, it's transformed in, we're going to fit that round peg into it. And sometimes we have to be willing to change to make it better for our citizens. So as much as I like Joey's, I still think we got to look at other ways to do it because that round peg's just not fitting in the hole anymore. Do we, so do we deliver meals at any of our programs? citizens deliver meals so CRT is funded through the North Central a area agency on NC aging AAA. finally get that out yeah. um, and the they get a grant from NC AAA to provide a meals on wheels program so the meals um, go out of the senior center we're doing about 60 a day here in Enfield so uh, in addition to our congregate meals so that, do we generate revenue from that no no because there's through Medicare a lot of the Medicare programs now there's companies who are doing that you know, and getting, you know, scoffed up by the big companies to, as vendors to do that. So if we're providing it for not getting it, I mean, is there a well, thought to where we could provide it to folks who may need it for revenue? Uh, it's a new idea to me. I know that... Um, it's a growing program yep. within the Medicare world. Okay, I'll where, check. Again, to what Donna's saying, everything yep. now, again, care, like we sort of talked about yesterday, the marketplace has changed. Yep. Where everything now is keep people in the, or try to get, deliver care locally as much as you can, which of course means your home, or again, mm -hmm. an, an adult day. But if we have the ability to already produce meals and deliver them, it is one, if you, there was an article I read and it was about a week ago and I think it was in Forbes, Forbes and were, I forget the name of the company, but they're now in 50 states where they're now getting paid by insurance companies or even CMS to deliver home, meals to homes for folks instead of again having, mm -hmm. having to have to, yeah. you know, as part of the, you know, disease management program, whatever it may be. Okay. So then when they're in the home, they can say, well, look, take a quick look. Is the house clean? You know, um, yeah. is stuff laying all over the floor? You know, then, you know, kind of the acti activities of daily yeah. living kick in, and then they can call someone, hey, maybe you want to send someone over to make sure she, the so house is clean. So it's more than a meal. It's a, right. home, it's a home visit. It's okay. kind of it's kind of home visit, but again, but delivering meals. Mm -hmm. So a healthy meal, so they're eating, they're getting what they should, but also making kind of a quick value check to make sure, oh, by the way, this person should be home, yeah. or maybe they shouldn't be home. Well, we're, sort of I'm, I'm happy to look, don't get me wrong. We're not staffed up no, to do no. meals or to deliver, yeah. but, you know, um, mm -hmm. we can certainly explore that, that stuff. Because as part of, as, yeah, as we talked about last night, of growing the infrastructure that the town has and the staff that we have, we need to find ways, we've talked about this together, where, hey, we can deliver services to other municipalities and we can do it very well and to generate revenue to not only continue the programs we have, but to build upon them <laughs> with the staff that we have as a way of making up for the revenue that we're losing from the, from the state of Connecticut. And I think this is the key. I mean, I, I wish we could have one night where you, you guys could show all the programs that you're involved in. It's amazing. I mean, every, I mean it really is. Mm -hmm. When I went to the, the I mean, I'm not trying to get a script here, I know we're talking about here, but when we went to the- Kite the, meeting. The, uh, the at meeting, the kite mm -hmm. meeting, and then the one, the overnight uh, warming center. Oh, yeah. Where again, we have a social worker who may or may, I mean, we deliver a lot of you, services. Mm -hmm. A lot that people don't even realize. And so, so that is what I'm hoping next, by the fall, I know we're worried about July, but by the fall, I wanna have, Every department head come forward and say, look, I think here's how we can expand our service. Oh, so I think that's why we have to be ahead of the game next year. Yep. I'm already looking at next year because this year I already know it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are too. But, <laughs> but if by next year, if we have ideas in the fall mm -hmm. saying, look, we can do this program and we can think we can go to East Windsor or Suffield and there's some interest and we think we can generate $500,000 only at a cost of $200,000. Well, I do the math. It's a win for us.
That's what that's what we have to do. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm being I know I'm simplifying the math, but but you know, I mean, I, I know you get what I'm talking yep. about, and so I think and I, I just that will then stop mm-hmm. sort of the you know, uh, what do we keep, what do we not keep? Well, that'll take care of itself. You know what I mean? Yep. And so I think that's what I'm hoping as we get through this year to already start on January second. I mean, excuse me, January. I don't want to. I don't want to go back to winter already. It's already cold <laughs> enough. July second, we're already thinking. Okay, how do we generate revenue by the fall program? So by next year's budget, we're instead of hearing, hey, we, you know, we're gonna have to cut you two, three, whatever. I mean, we're hey, well, maybe we can maintain our budget because we're doing all these other wonderful things that we think we can do for July of next year. And so, I mean, that's why I would like to get out now. Mm-hmm. So you guys are already thinking about it. Where the direction I think is the council we like to go. I don't want to speak for everybody else, but that's kind of what I'm already looking ahead to next year. Because I know this year's tough, and and mm-hmm. we're going to try to maintain what we can. And again, I, I I just there's at some point we have to figure out for you guys to do a presentation on all the things that we touch in this town. It's amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know we're here to talk about budgets and everything, but I, again, I was amazed that we had a social worker who showed up, and mm-hmm. and, a, and, a, and that's good stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. she would be with us tonight, yeah, but she's on a home visit, so yeah. yeah. And so now and that, now back to business. Okay. So curious, and I, I, I maybe I shouldn't ask this question. But why only two towns out of this list do you think that does this out of their budgets? The Adult Day Center? Well, it's expensive. Right. And I think um, it's unusual for a municipality to take on those services that most either nonprofits or hospitals do or other mm-hmm. forms right. of infrastructure provide the support for those kinds of programs. So those nonprofits that say do this for some of these towns, are they getting the state grants and the federal grants that make it, again, where there's not a deficit situation where, again, they can have a bus to go pick people up? I mean, is it similar to our program without, you know what I mean? How does it compare? Well, the regulations for the actual program, the Adult Day Center programming, are the same. Yeah. Regardless, right? So nonprofit or municipality. But the way you structure your funding is different. So, for example, the Felicians, ADC, apply for the same grants that we apply for. They get money, we get money. So that's how that's how that works. So basically we got a bunch of people, like a pinata, throwing stuff on the ground. Whoever gets there first gets the grant? No, everybody, I mean, they're... I and it's more of a partnership but, kind of thing. Right. So there's, it's not that it's it's competition, but not real competition because okay. that's what the federal money comes Correct. down okay, for yeah. is for those types of services. So right. it's kind of dedicated funding. Yeah. I think if there were fewer of them, we'd have more. But right. Right. but you know they provide an important service as well. So yeah. it's unusual to have two in one town. Let me let me just put that out there. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally. Right. Yeah. No, well, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? I thought you're doing a good job. Thank you. We we work hard. <laughs> Are we going to the next? There's more social services, right? Next. She or? is all yes. Uh, she is yeah. all yours. All divisions. All functions. So I'm assuming we right. I don't want that we before we jump into leisure services or anything else. We want to specifically talk about on social services. I, I'd like to hear a little bit about each of the groups. I mean, they're all sitting over there. Each of the groups. Under you. Oh, the program areas? Programs. What? So, I mean, yeah, I think if we tell folks... We're on this, television. Yeah, Damon about the Kite like initiative, the things do. that you folks are involved with Kite. Okay. Damon was just over there with us. Yeah. You know, and I know, again, some of the grants that you're getting... I mean, Peter and Lori are, are helping us on the opioid, and I know you're mm-hmm. applying for grants for, again, grandparents who, mm-hmm. who yeah. now are unfortunately have to take care of grandkids because, unfortunately, maybe they're kids. I mean, these are things that we have... And, and I think this is a good opportunity, A, to talk about it, and mm-hmm. B, where do people find this stuff? Mm-hmm. So we can do a better job of, of promoting it, you know, to, to the point of, again, the, again, I hate to keep harping to the point, people made you think I'm money hungry, but if we're doing a service good, yep. and we're providing it a, a, and helping people, why don't we spread it and, may, A, make yeah. money for the town so we don't have to raise people's taxes, and B, mm-hmm. provide a service to other towns because mm-hmm. we're good at it. Yep. You know? So we don't get roped into some other town doing it for us. Yeah. Yeah, well, which is what I'm my wor- most worried about the current well, ex- I think, yeah, economic situation. I'm just going to say for for social services in other communities, like Windsor Locks has one full-time caseworker, that's all they have. Hmm. So we have what 180 staff across mm-hmm. all the program areas. So in terms of just the capacity to do the work, we are currently doing some work regionally, for example, at the High Street office, we bring in CRT and their energy program 4 days a week. Enfield residents get priorities for those appointments, and then we bring in so people don't have to travel to Hartford or to Weatherfield, right. Weathersfield to make those appointments. So we have already reached out. We have legal services on Tuesday. They're doing free uh, legal services appointments out of High Street. Um, on Wednesdays, we have the Women, Infant, and Children program that comes out of East Hartford. 
Um, and we do about 60 families a day, Enfield families and regional families. All we do is provide space for that to happen. It makes it way easier for our young families with young kids to do that. We also have a, a intercommunity, which is a nonprofit from East Hartford come up. They're, they're a subcontractor for the State Department of Social Services, and we can do uh, when Brenda's in our office, um, she can do Medicaid applications and SNAP applications, which is the old food stamp program, live from our office. So we have kind of branched out. There's not a lot, I'm just going to be not a lot of money changing hands. They bring us paper for the copier when they make copies, but that's about right. it. But it provides a great service to a great many people, and it's a regional, and we do that stuff regionally. So in addition to that, I'm happy to run down what we do um, across the board. Um, we'll start with the little ones. Uh, the Child Development Center takes them at 12 weeks and goes up up into the age of 13. We have before and after care. We have preschool care. We, you know, infant and toddler care. Um, we have 28 school readiness slots, so those are funded by the state. That's a very important program, and uh, again, it's unlike a, a municipality to get those slots. They're hardly ever do we have an open slot. Um, so they do a great job, nationally accredited, and blew the last accreditation out of the water. We have the Family Resource Center, Amy. Karen's right there. She's director of our Child Development Center. And Amy, you can't see because she's <laughs> tiny and she's behind the camera guy. Um, but she has run our Family Resource Center. So we have two. That's also very unusual for a town to have two. Um, uh, and some of that money comes from our dear friends at Lego to support our, our work and activity. So we've reached out there. We have many opportunities to help families with young children get their kids ready for school. A lot of that is done through learning through play, which is why Lego loves us, Barnard, um, as well as Stowe in the Early Learning Center. In the middle of the pack there with our youth services folks, Jean Hoy is here, our director of youth services. We've run the youth center out of La Mania forever. Jean's been fabulous, pulling in resources, as you know, state, federal grants. We don't miss an opportunity to do capacity building. Um, they're out there getting their staff retooled all the time. I'm going to say it publicly. She's work married to the school district. So unlike many other communities that I've had the opportunity to work in, um, I've never seen a partnership either with the police department mm -hmm. or with a school system like we have here. And I'm not mm -hmm. kidding you. Um, all my other jobs were statewide, so I can, I can, attest, I can attest to that. Um, and so that's quite unusual in terms of the work that we do, um, how the focus really remains on the children, the families, and what they need, and kind of people put their egos and their roles aside. It's, it's actually uh, quite remarkable. As we move up the lifespan, we have the Adult Day Center, which we, we spent some time talking about already. Um, senior centers, Joanne, where are you, Nance? Nancy yes, is our is. acting. Um, you may see her out and about the senior center. She's our acting senior center director. Um, we've made a lot of, I say, programmatic changes for the better there at the senior center. We're trying to offer lots more free services for folks, so it's not a kind of pay to play. We don't want to eliminate folks who may not have the resources to go. We do congregate meals um, in two locations, Monday through Friday at the senior center and also at Mark Twain. And those meals are uh, CRT meals, so we really just provide the space for that. There, we don't pay any money for that. Um, Before you move on, yeah. senior center, is there any opportunity to reduce hours to save money? So it's actually interesting you should say that. We, we kind of left things as a status quo. We worked with um, the staff there um, in terms of kind of looking at the expenditures and where we could cut and all that kind of stuff. Um, they actually made a recommendation to reduce the hours. Mm -hmm. The senior center is open 57 hours a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Thursday, and then mm -hmm. 8 to 5 on Friday. That's a lot of hours. It's also unusual, if you have that many hours, not to be open at any point on the weekend. Because if that's your so point of social contact, not having hours on the weekend is difficult for folks. Um, so they did make some recommendations, but you all were gracious enough to leave, you know, staff alone and no furlough days and no um, hour cuts. One of the things that we've been struggling with at the senior center is trying to track the census times to find the high census times and the low census times. There are some lulls, like after lunch into the early afternoon. We know in the gym, for example, when we have peak times and when we don't have peak times, it's much more difficult to kind of track when folks come into the senior center for different activities and flow out. But we can try to do better with that in terms of the data. But it is an option for you all to consider. We did not at this point, based on directives that we were given from the town manager. Mm -hmm. So It is a tough budget year because all the problems mm -hmm. that we had in January didn't go away. Oh, heck we no. still got them in the current budget. Yeah. <laughs> no. And we didn't really address them other than whacking out things yeah. that didn't affect personnel. Yeah. But the problem is still there. Yeah, and we did. I'm, I'm just going to say we started early with um, getting ready for the budget cuts because of my experience at the state level. So mm -hmm. we went into 
a 10% holdback budget um, pretty much in September, and they were great at identifying places they could hold back. And so when you think about our little pie chart, right, so we had to take, uh, so if 60% of our funding is grants, you hold that harmless. We had to take all those cuts out of 40% of our budget. So that's, that's a, I mean, that's why I said it's remarkable what they've been able to do and how they've been able to expand. And, you know, I've, I've never seen a team so willing to share resources and staff. We have staff floating all over. Mm -hmm. Karen went to help Joanne to get ready. Jean sent staff over. Amy's been sending staff over to the other programs. And, you know, that's, that's what you have to do in these situations. And they're, they, they're amazing to come. They come up with ideas to help each other. So right. I think that's great. <coughs> Shared services. I, I yeah. know, Donna, you were talking about uh, programs, recreational type programs that different departments do, and, mm -hmm. and I think we were talking yeah, about That's the part of the reorganization mm -hmm. that yeah. we'll see later in the presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as part of that question, I think we, we do need to at least see a cost of what, if you could reduce some hours, because I mean, we're going to have to consider furlough days in this budget. We can, we can, I mean, we can actually, we'll work yeah, all together yeah. and come up. We had made so some recommendations ask up, earlier. Ask we up go front, back. so yep. it's not a surprise and you can prepare for it. We're Absolutely. trying to be upfront about everything. We did, yep. ask, we did ask the question last night, so we just want to make sure yep. that you guys are fair as well. Well, we can, we actually worked on some plans, yep. several different options so that we can go back yep. and pull some of those up and take another look at them and send them to, to Brian so we can get I mean, them I out mean, to I mean, the goal is simple. We don't want to lay anyone off. Yep, we're I gonna, totally agree. But we're going to have to try to look at read some reduced hours and furlough days if possible where yeah. it's it's just you know part of the reality yeah. of what we're dealing with. Yeah, and we've done, I mean, we have done some of that. We did re reduce a few right. um, staff hours. Um, but well, I know, I mean, I so know you were one of the, when we went through this to Peter's point and yeah. just, you know, again, to re reiterate that we, again, we didn't really reduce any services. I mean, we cut, and you were one of the leading departments that cut cut your budget and still provided pretty good service. Meaning you weren't the service was still what, yeah you know. And it, but I know you had to hold back and do different things. And yeah. I know you were, I think one of the the more or I don't want to use the aggressive, the more successful at finding savings. Well, it's because I'm old and I've done this before, <laughs> so I kind of knew. I, I kind of had my crystal ball and say, well, if we get ready now, we won't pay damage <laughs> later in the fiscal year. So, so. But so, we're happy to do those estimates for you. Sure. So, um, just to um, just to highlight some information we did provide. Um, and this dates back to, this memo was dated October 27th of 17, and I believe we provided this to you. Um, we did make an estimate um, of reducing the senior center hours from 40, uh, from 57 down to 40 uh, would save approximately $15,000. That was over a six month period when we made that projection. So uh, based on what we have, um, based on the information that we've previously uh, assembled, um, 30000 would be the savings if you reduce the hours. Now, um, we say that in a vacuum, so we just simply looked at the number of hours to staff and, um, you know, the number of staff needed. So, you know, that number could fluctuate up or down based on, you know, more direct input from Dawn and her yeah. team, mm -hmm. but that was the estimate. No, and I think it's fair. I mean, I guess it would be Jason I think and his team. Yeah. This is the right time to do together. it. I mean, I think October, it's not, it's fair. I mean, it's tough when you're in the middle of your budget to be coming up with that stuff. Right. That's why I think it's fair to do it now. And if it, right, if it's a different number, it's a different number. I just think we just need to understand it. Right. Yeah. No, thank you. Anyone else? Councilman Bosco. I just you want to thank you. Going through the group, I stopped you. Oh, oh. oh sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Where were we? Uh, you were at the senior, senior center. center. <laughs> and adult, oh, and transportation services. Yes. So yes. Magic Carpet and Dialeride. Um, the Magic Carpet is uh, fully funded by other sources, DOT primarily. So we don't have any. There's n n you know no general, general fund appropriation there. With Mag with <clears throat> Dialeride, um, one of the things that we do is you uh, a year and a half ago, I think it was FY16 in that at the end of that budget, you allowed us to keep dial -a -ride open from 4 to 5 p.m., so there was a little bit of expansion. Um, I have uh, talked to Annette in terms of if we had to cut, where we would we cut, and there are opportunities there as well to kind of reduce the service hours um, when we looked at when people were traveling and when they were less likely to travel and things like that. So we have uh, primarily a part-time staff doing driving. They've been trained, cross-trained, so they can do magic carpet and dial -a ride services if they need to. So, um, and that's an opportunity for us to continue to go back to the DOT funds and their federal funds. So they come down and they, they look fairly secure. So we feel pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. We will get two new buses, mm -hmm. as you know, uh, relatively soon and take some of the old ones out of a commission because it's killing fleet to fix them all the time. Mm -hmm. As you know, they fall apart piece by piece. So, yeah. so we have to resell those? We just oh, them. well, we just, or well, even for parts? Uh, scraps, yeah. selling for scrap. You know, we, right. leave, yeah. Yeah. we leave that up to fleet. We just drive them. Yeah. They decide how, you know, at what point they have to be taken off the road. Replacement for some dial yeah. buses. Yeah. 
When they're done with them, they're not. Uh, no, there's, they're, no, no, they're dangerous. So did I get everybody? Mm -hmm. Did I forget anything? No, okay. Oh, neighborhood services. What, am I kidding? Oh. So neighborhood services, which no one knows what we do, is a great uh, mystery. We have a mighty staff of three, and they provide a range of services. Uh, they really do help folks um, get attached to eligibility programs. We do the uh, tax program for uh, seniors and veterans out of our office in collaboration with the finance department. We do pre-screen folks for disability. Um, our social work services person does our elderly outreach, our senior outreach. Um, she also coordinates the staffing. She's a liaison for the Commission on Aging. She, her, uh, she has the veterans caseload, the homeless caseload, and the uh, senior caseload. So uh, you remember when uh, Pam was leaving and you guys provided funding for the uh, social workers. There was a part-time social worker that was supposed to be split between the adult day center and the senior center. What we found um, was that Jess could handle that in her caseload. So we eliminated that part-time social work position. We've absor absorbed that into the duties of other staff people. So it's not like we're not doing the work. Somebody else is just doing the work. And so that's kind of how we've stretched things internally. That is housed in our high street office with transit. So it's social services admin, uh, transit services, and neighborhood services out of high street. And then the rest of our facilities, Jeans and LaMagna, we're on beach with the adult day center. Uh, Amy is at Barnard and at Stowe uh, with Karen for the child development center and Nancy's out in the, next to the police department up on Elm Street. So we're kind of spread out all over town as well. And we have our congregate meal program. Yes, at Mark Twain. Uh, we do, this is one of the co only communities that does meals seven days a week for elderly people. And so um, we have an agreement with the Housing Authority to provide their meals Monday through Friday, and then you provide funding for staff to do meals on Saturday and Sunday. That That is the closest we get to being self-sufficient mm -hmm. for a program that we fund. Mm -hmm. um, they Folks donate a little bit of money, not a lot, um, to the meals, mm -hmm. and we get grant funding for that as well. So we pretty much almost break even with that. And that's managed by Laura. Bourgeois, Bourgeois. who is sick today. I have one on Tropical Island, one sick, and one out on home visit. Otherwise, they would be here with us today. Yeah. So, Councilman Bosco. Well, I want to thank you for, for everything you did. And I know this has been a tough year on you and all your staff for everything that's <clears throat> been coming down. I will have to say, I was, when I first came on to the council 12 years ago, I would have closed social services down in a minute. I mean, I, I had no use for anyone here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but over the years, I was able to see what all you and your staff are building on, and you are really what makes the community. And I just thank all of you for all the stuff you have to put up for in the especially last year. No, thank you. I'm just going to say, still job. not the worst job I ever had. Just saying that a lot. <laughs> going on the public record. I, I did customer service. Isn't that the bad? Worst job That's ever bad, ever. right? Yeah. Worst job ever. Thank you, Joe. So, so it's with, with the facilities committee, with all the things spread out over town, mm -hmm. will that be part as we look, as you know, another way we're trying to save money is to consolidate the yep. facilities in town. So I guess fair question would be if we actually had most of the services in similar, maybe one or two buildings as opposed to spread out. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it, you're in part of town where maybe it's easier sometimes, so it makes sense maybe if delivering in a section of town, but it like, seems like it'd make more sense if we had one area where folks could come and do one-stop shopping, we actually, for lack of a better word. Brian had asked for recommendations on where we could move yeah. to and how we could move, so he has those available. Um, he's at one point probably already shared them, but we're, we're pretty mobile. Uh, you know, and our staffs are relatively small, except right. for, you know, Karen. She's got like 65 staff a day over there. So, like, you know, we could right. move social services admin in a heartbeat, so yeah. we're open to that. That's good. Okay. So, the council one, one more thing. I can't get past this budget, <laughs> the, the dollars that aren't available. Um, if we had a bottom line number in mind, I don't think that we should go into your budgets and say here, here, and here. My suggestion would be we need this much money. How can we get it? And go to you, and you tell mm -hmm. us. Is that feasible? So we used to call that zero-based budgeting when I was young and in state service, that you build up from the bottom, you pick your priorities, and then you decide how much money you're going to spend. You fill that bucket. After that, you don't do anything else. We can do the budget any way that you would like. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, we've been cutting pretty significantly. 
what we what we propose here is about everything we have to give, and there's there is more give back literally in that budget in mm -hmm. terms of reorganization and some savings and some cost effectiveness. But beyond that, we're going to have to hit mm -hmm. staff and service hours and mm -hmm. things like that. So I, I'll, we'll work back from any bottom line that <clears throat> that you want to give us. Yeah, I only say that because it's tough for me to swallow a 3.8 million increase in taxes. Yeah. Well, uh, mine went up, <laughs> in Little East Granby, mine went up four mills mm -hmm. last year, and I don't even have trash pickup, just saying. Mm -hmm. So it's it's tough times for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we did that so that we could maintain the little bit of services that we have available for our folks. So I, it's tough. It is? Yeah. It's not unique to Enfield. It's the whole state yeah. because of what the, the governor doesn't have the money, so he's not passing it on. We can't yeah. get it. It's not there. Yeah. Well, you know, most of our grants, I have to say, um, are in the governor's budget are in the soft money. They're yeah. in the discretionary pot. So I was actually quite surprised that we didn't get cut more. In fact, in you service, we have more money this year than mm -hmm. we've had previously. It so. may have come from the federal government, too. Well, it may have come from somewhere, but yeah. I, I was just totally stupefied when that happened. Mm -hmm. It's unusual for us to call finance and say, hey, guess what? We're getting more money than we asked for. Mm -hmm. So, But that was a good call. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. John, I thought you had the wrong number. Yeah, I know. I'm like, what, Gene? Gene, are you sure? <laughs> Do that math again, Gene. Yeah. I'm only throwing that out because at some point before we actually vote on this budget, mm -hmm. we may want to reduce in, in how do we do that. Yeah. So we'll be coming to you and each department head asking the same question. Yeah. yeah. But I think that it's important to point out that to her comments that the zero-based budgeting is based on priority. Mm -hmm. We do not set priority as staff. Right. You as council set priority. Mm -hmm. So once we understand what your priority is, we're better able to understand how we can get to whatever the number, the target number is that you want. Mm -hmm. But until such time as we understand what those priorities are, we are not in a position to accommodate any target that you provide us. And that's where we're struggling to be able to provide more than a three and a half mil increase because we're, we're just absent that priority list at this time. That's where the big board comes in. <laughs> Everything's a priority. We have great services in this community. Yep. We had to we had to cut anything. So, but if you don't have the money, so hence it's three point so eight. Hence yeah, exactly. Point that's where you end up there. You got to cut it. You said it, Peter. But that but it doesn't. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way because <laughs> other people, because you know. Other people have functions that you know are very difficult mm -hmm. to to cut. So a prime example is, you know, Suzanne for last night. Prime example, yeah. she was only able to reduce her budget by approximately a hundred and fifty dollars over last year because so much of what she does is regulatory, mm -hmm. and most people don't. They don't really know what Suzanne does, mm -hmm. and they don't really understand that value now. Everybody in this room who we've talked very positively about over the last you know, 45 minutes has an incredible impact on all kinds of people in this community. And almost every person in this room is in a job and performs a function that is discretionary. Mm -hmm. So it's not as simple for us to say that we can simply make a cut across the board because as you also heard all of these people say, is that they're already so low on personnel and they're already so low uh, in their resources that they're cross-staffing and that they're sharing resources in ways that can't otherwise you know, you know, accommodate more reduction or more give. And so that's why, you know, like I said, I would have liked to present a budget that was absent a three and a half mil increase on the property side but unfortunately, without understanding what council's priorities were collectively, there was no place for us to come forward and say, this is the appropriate place to cut to meet a desired two mil increase. So we were absent several target marks to put a budget together up until, well, in, in including this meeting. So mm -hmm. if we can get some better definition of what priorities are or what you know, an appropriate mill increase is and what the prior, you know, what the priority services are, we can go back and do mm -hmm. quite a bit of work and, and present information to you that would be helpful in determining what a final budget is. Well, but, let me throw this out. Uh, you know all this stuff. They can't be cut, they can't be cut. But there's some flexibility here. So rather than us telling you where to cut, we just say we want to get the two mills. How do we get there? 
So again, this is based on policy. Everything can. We be, like everything. Okay, but it doesn't. Programs. But it doesn't work that way. I and my staff only implement policy directive provided by council. Mm -hmm. So what I can tell you is, is that if you are going, any service can be cut. Any service can be reduced. But at the end of the day you have to provide me the direction on what services matter most to you. And you are here to represent your constituents. So you provide me that information and we can continue to do, we can, we can do our best to ensure your priorities on behalf of your constituents are met. Mm -hmm. And that's the direction we need. So. Uh, you keep mentioning this direction thing. Yes. Two mil, cut wherever you want. Okay, and <laughs> and so I work for council, I make your and, I do not, and I do not have direction yeah, from over the here. majority. It's your views, young lady. It's not how it works. Okay, tell us it's how it works. It's just not how it works. We have to decide what do we want to provide to our constituents. We have built this empire, mm -hmm. you know, one brick at a time. And it's like, what brick do you not want to live with anymore? Yeah. You could do the furlough days, which the people are still there. They don't go away. That's but we save money. Correct. But that so all that's requires an option contract that we haven't negotiation. Considered. But that but again, it's not that simple. You got the unions. Okay. But it's not <laughs> just that. You again you have to define priority. So there has to be a choice, and that choice has to have a consequence. So with the furlough days, we can approach staff and say, we would like for you to take furlough days to reduce the budget expense by X, mm -hmm. okay? So I think that is a thought that has been put out there on multiple mm -hmm. occasions, and I think the vast majority of council would support offering furlough days to staff. Yep. But what I do not have, what I cannot provide to my staff, is the consequence should staff not choose that option. Mm -hmm. and only does the furlough day become a viable option for staff to consider once they understand what the consequence is. And the consequence is determined by the prioritization of services that has to come from council and the target expense or the target mill growth that council provides. And only then does the furlough day option become a value choice for staff. You got layoffs. If you don't take a furlough day, then you need to But again, I still need priority I still need priorities. Everybody. Shared pain it's called. But it doesn't but again, counselor, it doesn't work that way. I have an office of three people. Mm -hmm. So to take a ten percent cut from my office requires or could create a substantially larger ripple than a 10% cut across the board from, let's say... I don't think we're talking 10%. I, I heard a number 2%. Or 2%. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. there are some departments that just don't have an ability to give 2%. That's where you come in because you know that. We don't. Correct. But again, I can only provide advice and guidance based on the priority I get from council. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anyone else have any <coughs> questions? Donna? No? I think I'm all set. I think what, you know, I, maybe I can make a comment of, you know, on Board of Ed, all of us, the three of us that have come from Board of Ed, you know, we always knew that when we cut staff, we cut a program. And that relationship of staff to program was really clear. I think that we're not seeing that here on the council, that when we cut a staff person, we are going to remove a program. It's just like I just said, what brick in the building do you want to remove? What do you not want? And, and we have to look at that. You know, is there something that we have that just absolutely doesn't work? If it's adult daycare center, it's adult daycare center. We figure out a way to provide that the people can get it some other way. But we have, we have built the empire. But we're being told that what it takes to run the empire is too much. We have to make the empire smaller, whether through reorganization. 
And the thing is, is this moves really slow. I can put buildings together. I can move people and put everybody at the Jablonski. But again, it costs me money. Everything costs me money. I can't get to where, from where I am with this empire to a slightly more efficient empire, the empire that delivers the same product, but I still need money to get there. It's just, it's, it's very difficult. And, you know, Brian and I have had conversations where I'm sick of hearing about the mill rate. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally sick of it. Sick to death because without mill rate and average cost of the house, I do not know what that municipality is bringing in from each household. You know, somebody may have a mill rate of 25, but their houses are worth twice as much as ours. So those residents are paying way more money, and some of them aren't getting any services. But yet I got constituents that all they look at is mill rate because that's all we talk about. we got to start talking about something else. we got to talk about what do we not feel that we need to do and we can still be the same community that we are. And that's a really tough decision. And there's six of us sitting here because we don't have a meeting, we don't have a vote, we don't have nothing if we don't have six people. <coughs> and tonight, if we had to vote on anything and any <coughs> one of us didn't agree, it's a no-go. It's not a majority vote on the council. It's a six vote or you do nothing. So we're sitting here and we're making some really hard decisions and we're listening to really important departments and I guess I gotta get off my soapbox. Don't fall. Thank you. Don't trip. <laughs> Don't trip. Wait, put me up on a pedestal, Joey. <laughs> so anything from you guys? Else. You know, we'll, uh, like Brian said, you know, our job is to come up with uh, <coughs> options for you all to consider, and we'll run any <coughs> option that you want. We have the staff, we have the brain power, we have the passion, and so you just let us know, and we'll pump out whatever information you need to make an informed decision, and we'll move forward from there. Okay. Well, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. Good day. Thank You're you. Jason, Katie? I'm sorry, Mary, I didn't even see you. She was hiding. Slide off the All right. How are you? Worried? All right, got some handouts for you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so um, with me today, I've got uh, Katie Worth, who's the assistant director at the library, and Mary Keller, um, supervisor of recreation. Uh, not terribly long ago, uh, Brian asked me to put together um, what we were going to call a Department of Leisure Services, um, which would include recreation, the library, and the senior center. Um, and doing some research, we found out uh, that because of the charter, um, there has to be a uh, Department of Libraries with a library director. So Leisure Services won't be the, the name that we'll be using um, going forward. Um, so one of the um, things that we looked at doing is um, having the, the director of libraries, underneath that a um, deputy director of libraries, which would be Katie, who's currently the assistant, and a deputy director of recreation services that would be in charge of recreation, which Mary's currently doing, as well as overseeing the senior center. Um, so the org chart that I passed out to you guys kind of uh, delineates that. Um, one of the requests that Brian made was to make this uh, basically a, a, a zero, it, it wouldn't cost anything um, additional. Um, to achieve that, the position of the senior center director is basically downgraded to what we're calling the senior center manager right now. Uh, we're currently working on job descriptions as well as classification. So a lot, uh, some of this is still in some gray areas, but we're, we're working through it. 
Um, that would be very similar to the position that uh, Nancy's currently um, residing in. At the senior center, there was uh, both a secretary and an administrative assistant. And by combining these departments, we think that some of those administrative assistant uh, duties can be absorbed by other folks. So the long and short of it is, um, with this reorganization, it's not a huge savings, but it's looking like about $15,000 um, when it's all said and done. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the job descriptions, um, particularly for the what would be the deputy directors as well as a senior center manager are still you know being worked on and fleshed out um, some of the efficiencies that can be achieved through this um, a big part of that's going to be the programming um, you know currently we might be having a story time at the library the same time recreation is having something having to do with kids and we're basically dividing the the, the potential population um, so it's going to be a lot easier to coordinate that kind of stuff under this structure. Um, so I envision our children's librarians working closely with the folks in recreation that are working with children. Um, we've got a lot of adult programs at the library. Uh, a lot of that can be coordinated with the senior center. Uh, so that's another efficiency we have. Um, we can coordinate our publicity, I think, a little bit better, get a more... Um, unified message out there about what it is we have to offer across the board. Um, so that's that, That's the, the, the general overview of what we have come up with. Um, we can go into as much detail as you guys want as far as the individual departments as they stand now, um, questions you have about the reorganization, uh, some of the senior stuff, senior center stuff I may be calling on Don or Nancy to give me a hand with. Um, but that's 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 an overview of where we're at. So yeah, from that point, I'll open up to you guys and. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Okay, with this kind of plan here and the coordination, could we possibly get a comprehensive calendar of events? Sure. Yeah, I, th I think that's absolutely kind of something. That at kite, that you know, that would help the town, and we could get you know more participation of of our families and everybody in what we're doing. No, I mean, that, that's, that's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about when I'm talking about the, the publicity and that kind of thing. Yeah. We, can, we can tighten that up. And I think everybody likes your new web page. Thank you. And we're hoping that was that we one of the things we've been very proud of this too. year. <laughs> so again, at some point, I know we're in a, will there be a spot we'll be able to get the Department of Leisure Services into one building? Assuming we're spread out I, all over. Multiple. Again, I think that 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 comes back to you guys. Right. In a, a, you know, how um, many buildings uh, now would they be spread out in, Brian? Um, so, so La Mania. So right now they're at La Mania. They're at uh, JFK. Yeah. They're at the Annex. Then you've got uh, the library, library yeah, at Central. Libraries. You've got the library at Pearl Street. Then you have the Senior Center as well. Mary, I know that we're probably missing another location or two in there as well. Every school at some point. All right. Do you have anything left at Prospect Street? Anything down there? That's buildings and grounds. Building ground, that okay. has nothing to do with recreation. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for me? Are you a <clears throat> fee based structure pretty much? Uh, it's breaking that, that, even at. at that, that's that's another piece of this that um, you know it's uh, one of the reasons we have that hard division between libraries and the recreation services by state statute we cannot charge for uh, services programs at the library. Mm -hmm. um, however, on the recreation and the senior center side, that is something that we can do, and really that's another efficiency that we might be able to make is tightening up between recreation and the senior center how those fees are collected and that kind of thing. Um, so it's a little of both. Mm -hmm. You'd like to think that if you were running a program, the fee covered the cost. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it does or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You might be able to answer that. In recreation, <coughs> all of our programs are self-sustaining. Without the admin piece, so without my salary or without the salary of the people in the office, but the program staff, the supplies, all of that, um, is covered under the fee structure, so all of our programs are self-sustaining, and several of them we do have a surplus revenue at the end mm -hmm. of the year. 
during your, some of your programs. Do you do busing of kids, like in the summertime? The only time we run buses is if camp is going to a field trip. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we do not bus to and from activities, mm -hmm. no. Do you use uh, the, the Smith School buses mm -hmm. to do that? On the library side, we offer third grade visits um, where every third grader in the town of Enfield is brought over to the library, and that is, we, we do pay for that busing on the library side. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the hours now the, of the general library? Uh, we are open Monday through uh, Friday, um, eight or nine to eight, and then, or I'm sorry, nine, nine to nine. nine. Thank you. And then uh, Saturday, nine to five. Um, Pearl Street, we have reduced the hours there. We used to be open on Saturdays. With the uh, cut that happened uh, in, back in September, um, one of the reductions we made was to overtime. The only way that I could really overtime proof the schedule was to eliminate the Saturdays at Pearl Street. It hasn't been terribly popular um, because we had to continue with that 1% reduction. Um, right. I've chosen to keep Pearl Street closed at that um, on the Saturdays. And the, regular, the central library is open on Saturdays? Yes. What, what's the hours? 9 to 5. 9 to 5, got it. Okay. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Suzak? I actually got a call from uh, one of my constituents, and they were excited. They would love to see the library over at the annex. Brian needs to present his uh, view of Enfield from a high level, and uh, I, I, he has a little different view than I do, but I've had other town managers, so I figure I can pick and choose from all the, <laughs> the good ideas that come before me. But uh, great um, kudos for the pickleball. Lots of very happy people with pickleball. And then, of course, in the next breath, Brian, good thing Brian's sitting down, they want to know, gee, do they think they ever could use the, the pool at the annex? And maybe when they move, sp summer comes, they were thinking about moving pickleball out to the tennis courts there. So we, we should probably check the for cracks and things on that those tennis courts out there. I don't know what kind of condition those are in. But really, I've, I've from the residents, I've gotten really good feedback from, you know, some of the programs that are being done for through Mary in conjunction with the senior center prior, and I think going forward, this is going to be a good relationship. So with the consolidation, you mentioned there's a little bit of savings. So then what is there, so then I guess what is the efficiency of service or the improvement in service through the, re, so. So, so I, I think it would boil down to better coordinating the programs. Yeah. Um, it would be better publicizing and like like Donna was was getting at um, getting a calendar together that's really going to demonstrate everything that we are offering um, what am I missing um, so from recreation yeah. how how will you be now more inv are you more involved than you were I know you do the youth programs but now at the senior mm -hmm. center we be more involved now than you were before you know those sort of things what's the changes are gonna be other than pickleball <laughs> oh is that the only change is that the only change <laughs> We haven't had the time to get down to the program level yet to look at what new programs we would add in yeah. or what we would work with cooperatively with the Senior Center. Um, we just came on board about a week or two ago. No, no, so, I, yeah, this, is, this has I, been so, yeah. I, um, recent. You know, I, you would need to give us a little time to look at that and figure out how we could coordinate. And yeah. um, we program for every age. Right. It doesn't matter how old you are. So we can work cooperatively with the library or with the senior center to offer programs for any age. If we're not duplicating services, then maybe we can take, you know, if they're running a playgroup and we're running a playgroup, maybe we take our money and do a different program for that age other than a playgroup to offer something else. Well, that was my question this summer. I know we do tons of fun. We yes. have a whole bunch of stuff that the town's involved in. With the summer reading program so at the library. Right. That's the question I have. I mean, it comes to a point where we duplicating services. From, and I'm not saying we shouldn't offer all these programs because right. we should. But, I mean, there is one organization has this program. Mm -hmm. The direct, direct department has this program. Mm -hmm. Another one, EFPRC, has another program. And it's great that we offer all these programs, but right. the town has, is somewhat funding them all. Is there a way we can, If, if there's know, a benefit to this, I really see that as being it. Right. Um, That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. I mean, because it seems, again, my own armchair analysis of bringing this together is mm -hmm. that we do do a lot of duplication in a good way. But mm -hmm. how do we coordinate where, again, we're providing the same level of service, but more efficiently right. save some money, then maybe we can provide other services that we can't currently because mm -hmm. maybe... 
one organization is doing it this way, then they're sure. doing it at this school, or they're doing it at the Central Library, or they're doing it at the Annex. It's like it seems like we have all these programs that are all siloed all over town. Yeah. And it, I have to admit, it drives me nuts because I know it would be great if we could have something coordinated where, you know, and I think that's and the same thing when we just talked about s social services. Same idea. I know there's a lot of great programs. I mean, we, I mean, I think people, I know there's not, we have Head Start and then we have, you know, the, the children, the EF, I mean, the, the resource center. So why do we have two? All It seems like we have multiple. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're kind of trying to get through this process, too. Right. So, oh, I agree with you. Right. So yeah. to me, you know, what I think, you know, I saw in putting this together was the fact that you wind up having this force multiplier, if you will, to put out um, experienced education. So for instance, um, right now, you know, we just saw the end of the Winter Olympics and we just saw, um, and um, I should say we just see, but we're about to see the FIFA World Cup uh, begin, all right? So how, you know, so now with everyone under one roof, you know, the library team can make it an educational piece which then leads to right. the opportunity for you know recreation, both you know at all age levels, really to to program that activity. So we're driving participants who might not otherwise be aware of the service. You know, we're driving them from one recreation service through library out to the physical education component of that, and then we can even tie in on the senior side you know, tap that resource of, of right. seniors who might have experience, who might have firsthand knowledge or um, an ability to come in and participate and share, whether or not back through the library, whether or not back through the younger recreation participants, um, or to, to branch back over now to the social services side. So, you know, you can pick those types of events or those types of, you know, notable social culture benchmarks and impress upon that, but even more so to your comments and into some of Mary's as well. There's a lot of duplication of service, and maybe it's not the duplication that we're looking to um, to to remove, but maybe it's the increase of accessibility. So why should um, somebody who's providing um, uh, you know phys uh, physical training at the senior center? You know, they provide that function in the morning and then they leave at 10 and then recreation brings in somebody, you know, who performs the exact same function, but later in the day. If there's more communication between them, do we not get more bang for the buck? Can we not coordinate the programs and the transitions much better? So, um, you know, what I envisioned from, from this was not, um, you know, wasn't any effort to reduce expense, I'm glad that even at fifteen thousand dollars, whatever the magic number is, but it's to give you know Mary and Jason and you know the folks over at the senior center the opportunity to have more programming, more right. um, quality of life opportunity than what we're giving them in the silo divisions we're currently operating. Well, and I think that, and again, I understand it just happened, but I think that's kind of my point at some point, and I hate to use this private sector term but we need an exact summary of what mm -hmm. here's what we did right. and here's the goals we hope to achieve sure so that's what and I agree with it but I think that's what you know then we can help communicate that to the public and yes we did get some savings mm -hmm. but the goal is to do this yeah. right. that we may see some savings down the road which will allow us to do some yeah. things like just, again maybe we wanted to have a, a crew in, in, in Connecticut to get people in it to get them down to the river sure Hey, if we save twenty grand because we're not duplicating the service, maybe we can get someone to start a crew and get people to the river. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, little things. Um, you know, Katie was looking through some of the budgets, and there at the senior center, there's a line item for uh, publications. So we we buy magazines right. and and books at the library. There's a small library over at the senior center. That's one of those things where you know we, we are we're duplicating. Right. And we may be able to get more savings from our library accounts than they're doing on the consumer side. Right. Yep. No, I appreciate it. No, and I think that's what, that's kind of, I mean, it's a, good, it's, it's a good idea. I think that's what we have to continue to do. And what I would like to start seeing is that we constantly relook at this stuff. So it doesn't take, I'm not saying, but it doesn't take a budget crisis to say, okay, we need to think if we can do things better. Sure. I would like to see it ingrained that we're constantly looking at maybe we can do some things better. And I know change is hard, but once you start dealing with change, it's really not as hard as you think it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, but I think the community is not, is going through that now, but 
I think the interesting thing is if, hey, well, we used to do this, and we did it this way, but it was great, but now mm -hmm. we think we can do it even better this way. Yeah. You know, that's why we did X, Y, Z. And I think that, I mean, I don't want to speak for Councilman Fall. I think it's a little bit of his frustration back and forth with Brian is that, you know, we need a little bit more of that so we understand, all right, you know, if I have to cut a program because I'm trying to save to get to an X, you know, as my priority, it'd be nice to kind of understand, okay, where that where is this evolving, sure. so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, no? I agree with you. Deputy Mayor Susan. I think this well, wasn't really budgetarily driven. This was really efficiency driven and better, you know, delivery. I think for me, being on the council, year number five, hallelujah, it finally happened. So it's a good thing that this, it's, it was really obvious that, you know, our, especially at the senior center, to me, I can speak for the seniors, the seniors nowadays are much more active than they probably were 30 years ago. I do things that my parents would never have done in their, their mid-60s. They never, it's... And they're still alive, and that's probably why they're still alive in their mid-80s. <laughs> 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 this could be an explanation here, but Are you I saying think, you want to run an adult daycare center in town? Is that your uh, <laughs> I, I have one across the street from me that they take care of each other, and I, I'm very grateful for that. But um, it's, it's something that, for me, has been a long time coming, and I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, it is very successful. And like I said, the seniors are already looking to want to know when they can use the pool. <laughs> Another thing I want to throw out there. Thank God I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor Falcon mentioned um, uh, a grants website. One of the things that we have just in the last month or so um, started at the library is we're now a member of uh, the, the Funding Information Network, which is a, a major database of grants. Uh, so my um, head of reference is currently getting up to speed on that. So we're going to be teaching some classes on that to the public. Going to reach out to the nonprofits in town so that they are aware that this this resource right. is there. And I mean, it could be a benefit to town departments as well. Yeah, and it's funny. I pay, I'll go right to you. I'm sorry. It's funny you say that. One of the things I've actually chatted with Don about, and this is one of uh, that's that's the point, right? So there's so much grants out there that mm -hmm. we you know we were, we were just trying to get to a Bloomberg Bloomberg grant that again right. we should be able to apply in a go because we have art talent in this town, we have all it, but we don't have the infrastructure. We're not ready for that sort of thing. So to that point, as through this budget, we try to shift resources. We need someone, we need, whether through the department heads who meet, where we have, again, coordinating of grants. So if we have a great idea for this organization, that organization is not competing against the same grant. Sure. And then, oh, by the way, because now we're organizing, to your point, hey, bang, that pinged up. We should be able to be able, hopefully, put together a quick little response team and put it together and apply for that grant. Because, sure. again, we have a shot of winning those grants. Yeah. You know, for example, there's, I mean, I'm not saying uh, $100,000 is not a lot of money. Of course it is. But there's million-dollar, multi-million-dollar grants out there that we're not ready as an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And part of, I think, what, what we're talking through this is how do we coordinate stuff so we're not working against each other. Mm -hmm. And everyone benefits from the money. So, again, we're generating revenue that we're losing from the state, which we have to generate. And if we don't generate it, then, unfortunately, it's just an expense yeah. cut. I mean, the math is simple here. It really is. It's simple. Yeah. So then how do we do that based on how some of the reorganization? And how do we do it within, within the current? And if we need to hire somebody or whatever, change someone who's really good at it, who's sort of like a, I hate to say it, like a promoter, for lack of a better word. Hey, look, get everyone together. There's a grant. We need this person involved. We need that person involved. We need this organization involved. It should be like that. Yep. And that's what I think, hopefully, that if... And I think part of it is, is staffing. Right. Um, yeah, and to be perfectly honest, um, so I mean, I, I I would like to see that made into a priority, and you know, yeah. the, if we and have I someone dedicated things, to doing that, I, I think, I think it'd be a good thing. From you guys, how to pull it off, yeah. right? So that's I think some of the things I don't want to speak for Councilor Falk, but mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for from <laughs> sure. you. Not not necessarily, hey, what cuts we're going to make too, yep. but hey, look, if we did this. Man, we would be able to apply to that grant that we just couldn't yeah. do it because, you know, those sort of things. And, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to pursue this right. funding information network. Um, library I used to work at in Middletown, we had that. And it was a great resource. The community yeah. used it all the time. Um, and it was, it, 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 it helped the nonprofits. Right. It, it, yeah. Because the private sector wants to donate money. Mm -hmm. they, but they need organizations who are organized, who have, again, who are taking in health and wellness, who they think is... It wants a healthy community, all the things that you folks are talking about. Yep. How do we bring it together so we can get that money? Yep. And I think if we can, then we're not going to be having every meetings with you guys saying, hey, look, you got to cut your budget. 
Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, that's what I'm, I mean, I think that's part of this discussion as we're going through this process. It's not just about the bad news we deal with, but how do then do we get ahead of the game? Right. And so we just, I, again, next by next fall, that's what I'm hoping to hear from you guys. Like, hey, look, we think if we did this, we can go after this amount of money, or we can provide this service to Summers. We can provide it to whatever. So we're, we're having conversation how we're actually expanding our service as opposed to, hey, we got to cut 2% because we don't want to pass a $3 million increase on. Sure. So that's, you see, that's what we're trying to get to. Mm-hmm. I know it's going to be a little painful getting there, but that's what we're trying to. So, you know, again, I appreciate your, you know, being willing to, you know, answer these questions. Sure. Sorry, go ahead, Peter. <clears throat> On the, uh, the grants, um, I've had many discussions with a number of people about that, and uh, some of the feedback was that, that you don't necessarily need a full-time grant writer because the staff is most knowledgeable about what's required, what they need, sure. are part-time employees or college students, interns or whatever, mm-hmm. to gather the data yeah. that they need. And, and I don't know if, if you well, agree with that concept to, or not. To your point, um, Katie just submitted, I think, um, yesterday or the day before, a uh, grant application to help with some programming. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, America's Big Read, or I forget the, the title of it. The Great American Great American Read. Read. Mm-hmm. And there'd be, um, uh, so PBS is putting forth 50 Great American books, and we would be presenting programs surrounding these titles, um, book discussions, that kind of thing. There'd be funding for programs surrounding it. So uh, it, it, it's taking place. I mean, uh, you know, Katie's doing it mm-hmm. right now. I mean, Dawn's organization certainly pursues a lot of grants. So, mm-hmm. but... Um, you know, to, to, to your point, I think maybe a more focused um, approach may be more beneficial over the long term. But, Absolutely. yeah, uh, in sort of a guerrilla fashion, we are going yeah. after those. Yeah. It's almost like having, if you've ever, and again, I know this is more of a maybe a p- p- private side, but if, like, you have an RFP, right? Sure. You have a request for proposal, and you have a team that, bang, that goes right to work on that proposal. You can bring your, you know, someone who's a, who's a project manager, someone who organized knows to get, knows to get him involved, her involved. You better make sure everyone's in the office on X date because it's got to go out the door on that date. It's just someone like that. And again, whether it's through a, a committee of people that we already have, or again, to Peter's maybe a part-time person somewhere where, sure. you know, hey, look, we know the grant's coming out for XYZ and we need to coordinate with these two departments in town and this nonprofit in town and whatever it may be. And, and bang, we get a great proposal. And now we start winning some of those. I mean, we, I know we do a good job of grants. Mm-hmm. But I think, again, the marketplace has changed. The private sector wants to donate a ton of money to organizations who are willing to be organized, coordinated, not live in silos like what we do in this town. And, hey, we're going to give you a, a million-dollar grant because you're going to plant gardens and everybody, you know, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, art, if you're willing to do it, like the Broomwood grant wanted an art project sure. in town, which, again, that should be right up our alley. Right in this town, and so I'm saying well, we learn from it. We're going to get better at it by next year, but again, you know, but we're now a year behind already, as right. we're trying to generate revenue. So I think again, as we're going, as I said, I don't keep laboring the point, but I think that's part of what we're at looking from you folks, as we consider you folks the experts, you know. And I think that's kind of not so not just hey, I, I can cut two percent of my budget because we know, it, and the bottom line, if you're forced to, you're forced to, and if you know, and but you'd rather have hey, look, I could probably get another person if I, and I can generate. Two hundred thousand or two a million dollars in revenue. That's a better conversation. Sure. Yeah, you, yeah. you hire somebody that pays their own salary. Well, that's the point, right? That's the but that's the point. I mean, and that can be done. And communities are doing that around the country. Not just, I mean, maybe not in Connecticut, but if you look out outside of country, that's what a lot of the communities are doing. That's how they're staying ahead because this cuts in state money is not going to go away. This is not a one year gig. So that's the, that's the thing. I mean, this is unfortunately even if they change the the position of governor, whoever gets. We're now all of a sudden going to get a million dollars next year extra money in state revenue. It's just not going to happen, you know. So I, I just I think that's why I think for me that's the priority when I'm asking for you folks. Other than just you know, hey, if we have to make tough cuts, that, that's I agree. That's up to us to make those cuts. But again, but those things I'm hoping you guys can kind of organize and help us say, hey, look, this is the priority. There's money going to there's money we see being put here. We need to organize, and that's where we need to go after next year. Maybe it changes the year after, and that's fine because it will. Sure. But right now, clearly. Health, everything healthy and happy in a community, organizations are throwing money out. There's organizations trying to help the opioids out there. I mean, real money, millions of dollars. That are not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dismissing a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I'm saying, but I mean, a million dollar grant is a pretty big, pretty big sure. help to any any program in our town. Yeah. So sorry, I'm, I'll be done. Uh, yeah, one more. <laughs> uh, cultural arts. Uh, do they still do bus trips? 
So I'm culture and arts now. Um, <laughs> do they still do no. bus trips? No. They used to go up so to... So uh, what, what they are currently so. focused on is um, the, a mini grant program. Mm -hmm. So rather than spending the... Frankly, we've had trouble getting enough people at the meetings and dedicated enough to follow through with the work. Um, so the direction we've been taking is grant making small mini grants to um, <clears throat> local artists or um, cultural institutions mm -hmm. uh, so that they can th th we're providing the money to be a catalyst for the arts. Um, one thing that uh, culture and arts is uh, currently working with is the um, the 100 High Street project, the Opera House Players. Uh, they came to us with a, a, a good grant proposal, and uh, so we're working on that right now. And I, I think that's one of those things that I think is going to be a really good fit for the town. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> I, I only say that because in, in, in past years, uh, cultural arts would get a budget. Right. And then the ERFC says, oh, we need some money. So cultural arts would give money to ERFC. And I'm the, I don't know if they did or they didn't, but it's the concept. Mm -hmm. They'd be giving it to other charities out of their budget. Mm -hmm. And that didn't seem fair. And I, don't, I, I, mean, you know, I don't know if that's still going on or, or, at, or not, or it's, whether it's, you were even aware of it. I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat aware of the, the past practices of mm -hmm. culture and arts, not... Um, not very extensively. But as to bus trips, we're running bus trips out of the senior center. Mary's running bus trips out of recreation. I, I don't know that we need a third venue running bus trips. I mean, you know, as to the point of duplication of services, mm -hmm. I think that's a perfect example. Well, I think Mary used to run those bus trips, right? When I was on cultural and arts years ago, they used to do that. And then over time, the direction from council was that they wanted them to do more activities within the community instead of bringing them elsewhere because that was already being done. Mm -hmm. So trying to bring, you know, a, a program into town that's different than s s what an other organizations already doing. Mm -hmm. So they kind of backed off on that, um, and it's kind of shifted over the last few years. Well, We've got a the, uh, whipping poofs in and for the Christmas show over at the mm -hmm. church in Azabel. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they did it at the, at the Congregational Church mm -hmm. did something there as well. I'm not sure. But they used to do those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We've got a good group of good, good core group of people right now on, on culture and arts. We could use I think we've got two more vacancies. Um, but we've we've got a good group right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Bosco. How young do you have to be to go to the senior center? Fifty Joe. <coughs> No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So a few more years for you, Joe. A few more years for you. I'm really old. I was hoping it was at least 60, you know? I had a few years. Right, right. That's why we're so That's why you said young. 50 years old. Oh my God, that's awful. Is that a question or a comment? I have a comment on that. And, and that is that after I retired, uh, I went over to the senior center for the, the general tour to find out what goes on there. And, and at the beginning, uh, they did a, introductions in that little library room. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who are you? Why are you here? And that type of thing. And, and I said, well, I'm, I'm retired now. And, and I was always afraid to come here because I didn't think I was old enough. I was 72. <laughs> I didn't think I was old enough. 22 years you lost right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I go now. I use the gym. We could have, been, we could have had pickleball a lot sooner. <laughs> <laughs> but they have some great programs there. And, and, oh, and you, usually when I go in, they're doing yoga. And I go in yeah. the afternoon when it's slow. You go in the morning, it's mm, like this yeah. in the gym. But anyway, they're doing yoga out there in the, in the general room, whatever you call it. And uh, I'm just so impressed. And then when I come out, they're doing movies yeah. in the big room. So they do a lot there. They really do. Any other questions? Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, sir? No, nothing else on the agenda uh, tonight from us. So we are meeting next Monday. Uh, sure. I believe that is Here. correct. The next meeting Before is we adjourn. indeed Monday the 23rd, and it is the Public Safety Troop and Public Works. So 6, 6, 630 here. Yes. All right. Thank you, folks. Motion to adjourn. Second. Councilman uh, Deputy Mayor Suzak, Councilor Bosco, all those in favor? Those in favor, zero against. Mm -hmm.